Today, we're gonna talk about how COVID has impacted the informatics field. This is Jen from Informatics Life, where I give you weekly insight on healthcare and technology. I bet you're wondering, is informatics impacted by COVID? Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. We're not sitting back on in our desk or cubicles, chilling, doing nothing at all. No, 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 no. It's not like that at all. Unless your hospital has no COVID patients. But as you guys know about me, I work for a very large organization in Florida. And yes, we are impacted heavily by COVID cases. But first things first, before I even start, thank you to all of the nurses out there, all of the physicians, all of the chaplains, all the physical therapists, all of the housekeepers, everyone who's out there giving patients care during this season, thank you. You all are so super important and we value you. Three ways how COVID has impacted the informatics field. Number one, telehealth. Do you have telehealth at your hospital? Hmm, we do. So what has happened with telehealth? It had to expand very quickly, very efficiently to provide services for these patients. So that is definitely something that was different before we actually COVID this pandemic happened because before we had telehealth services, but it was like more for one specialty, not that many physicians used it. So it was pretty much utilized, but just not that much. So with the pandemic of COVID and most likely any future pandemics, telehealth has expanded to cover more units. Nurses provide coupled care where they'll take the device into the patient's room and the physician will call in um, and the nurse while they're in there, that's why it's called coupled. So the nurse will take care of the patient, do what they need to do. So it's not an extra visit, just to be very clear, is when they're going in there for their usual uh, th needs that they need for the patient. And then the physician will call in during that time for telehealth visits. So it was very orchestrated. They had to like plan that out. But what did informatics do for that? Well, we had to do a lot of training. We had to get all of these nurses, all of these educators, uh, managers, health supervisors, everyone up to speed with telehealth and how to utilize it. Now we had a, a lot of different teams involved with that. That was very helpful. But informatics is that is typically that, I always call it that peanut butter and jelly between the sandwich of clinical and AIT. So we hosted many classes to provide the education for this new system. And then it just so happened for our system, we actually switched uh, applications. So we went from one application to a different application. So we ended up having to teach a whole new application as well with its expansion. Let me cover it really quickly. What did nursing informatics have to do or health, health informaticists, whomever you are, depending upon the department, like I said, organize the education. We had to in make sure that we understood how to use the devices because we're on call. <laughs> so we have to make sure like we know what we're doing if someone calls for help because we're the help. We had to just ensure that um, everyone knew what to do with the device. Uh, we also, while we were hosting classes, we offered questions and answers to those, um, our clinical staff who needed to know those kind of things. So telehealth, if you don't know what telehealth is, and I need to backtrack a little bit, telehealth is just a device that you use to speak to the patient, whether it's a nurse, whether it's a physician to the patient, you're using a tablet or a laptop to communicate with the physician or the clinical staff, whoever it is. So those kind of things are set up in the patient's room and the patient can utilize them with the nurse's assistant. The second one I wanna to talk to you about is bed expansion. What is that? Well, if you have some type of bed management system within your system, like in New York, whether you were in Texas, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in Chicago, wherever there is a large amount of people, your hospitals have to get ready for 
bed expansions, like whether it's like they make tents outside where they do patient services, if the hospitals are full, or if they book up hotels and provide patient care in there. I heard some hospitals were doing that in New York and in Texas. So what is an informaticist part in this? With informatics, you could participate in actually doing the technology builds for the bed expansions, where you're building different rooms, mock beds for the hotels or for the tents. Or you could participate in building documentation for these mock areas that will provide amazing care for the patients. So like, say for instance, in the hospital, you know, we have this expanded type of documentation for inpatient services, but maybe the hotels or, you know, the hotels or the tent areas will get more like a, a minimized view of those type of documentation. So you could be participate in building specific forms for that and as well as working with top executives to see what is actually required for those areas for documentation for COVID cases. Another way an informaticist can assist with the bed expansion is ensuring that all monitors, uh, cardiac, when blood pressure machines, uh, thermometers, whatever like the technology that's needed to care for that patient, that that is top notch, is ready to go and ensuring that everyone has what they need as far as technology for these outside locations. So you could assist with that as well. And lastly, what I wanna to talk to you about is how state documentation or state required documentation has impacted informatics. It has significantly, I can't tell you enough, so with state documentation requirements comes more work for nurses on the bedside and physicians and whomever is giving clinical care, it could impact their work as well. So the health informaticist or the nurse informaticist has to get involved with making those changes within the documentation system. So for some departments where informaticists work, you would do the mock-up of those changes, create the education for those changes. And as well as what's more importantly is what you wanna do as an informatics specialist is try to make it easy for the nurses. Please remember you are patient advocates still and you are nurse advocates, all right? And you are physical therapists and physicians and pharmacy and whomever it is, you are the advocate for them. So you know, what is life like right now for our amazing medical staff? Crazy. Yes, it is. They have so much work out there. You know, they're gowning up, going into those rooms, taking care of patients. And the last thing they need is a lot of documentation, added documentation. One thing that your role is, and remember this, is to make it as easy as possible for them. If you can create the documentation where it can pull in some data automatically, maybe during registration, they already uh, know, they took down their race and ethnicity. They already took down their gender. They already took down if they're hospitalized or if they're in the ICU or whatever the, the questions that the state may be requiring. Your job is to, hmm, we can pull that data from certain data points within the EMR. So that way, that's already completed when the nurse has to do this extra form for state required documentation. And it's wonderful, it's absolutely wonderful. So the nurse will go in, oh God, thank goodness, that is already answered. And all they're doing is verifying, making sure it's less clicks. I always remember, we go for less clicks. <laughs> so as long as they don't have to do a little finger to click it, they can just say, okay, that's correct, and sign off. That is wonderful. All right, so like I said, doing data pulls to make sure that that information can get pulled in there automatically. Of course, it has to be accurate information, that's important. Also, if this state requires some questions that probably will get the nurse like, what are you talking about? It's up to you to try to put it in layman's terms for all nurses. I always say, Bring it down to the GN level. Those are our beautiful, amazing new nurses out there who may not quite understand all the healthcare lingo yet. So you wanna put reference text wherever you can to explain what the state is asking. Or I, I don't know whatever system you have, 
Uh, we work with uh, a specific system at this time and we are able to put reference tags. So that makes it easy for the nurse, whomever it is, whatever, whatever generation they come from, and they could quickly say, oh, okay, I know what that is. I can ask that question. So that is really important. So like I said, if you can pull data points in to go into the form out of bathroom where the nurse can just review it really quickly, or if they can, uh, you know, have reference tag to really explain what the state is asking. Remember, you are an advocate for that nurse for that physician, for the pharmacist, who whatever informatics role you're playing in at that time in your life, you are the advocate. So you wanna make it easy for the patient to understand as well as the medical staff. So you know their time is valuable. They're busy, they're gouting up, they're doing whatever they need to do to take care of that patient. So you wanna do things, make it easy for them, make it quick for them, make it safe and efficient, make sure you're giving them the best of care, the best of attention, but getting it done fast and efficiently as an informatics specialist, remember that. And what can go with that state documentation as well is changes to things weekly. That's normal in informatics. You'll be like, we just changed that. And then they come out with another thing that's required. You're like, wait, what? And you don't want to confuse this out, but just be aware that changes can happen very rapidly in the informatics realm to where you got to push things out. There's deadlines to meet because the state is requiring you to answer these things right away. So you have to remember that you have to do this stuff. You don't have a choice. So it's just making sure you're communicating with the staff, making sure they have great education and explaining the why. Why are you changing the questions every week? It's not us, it's the state. So I like to put like state requirement so the nurses know that, hey, we're sorry, but you gotta do this. All right, I think that's enough for today as far as how has COVID impacted the informatics realm? Not everybody can say that they lived through a pandemic. I know that I have, and I have seen how pandemics impact informatics. So I hope that's some very good knowledge for you to take with you, whether you're a student and maybe you're a hospital and you haven't been yet impacted that much. So maybe this will help you make some better decisions or learn something new. If you like this content and you wanna learn more about the informatics life, in healthcare and technology, like and subscribe down below because you're gonna hear more from me about that life. Thanks for watching you guys, bye.